Okay, I thought I'd just do a uh, short video on describing some of the features of a bluebird tree swallow nest box. This is a design I use quite a bit uh, on our property. Like most tree swallow and bluebird boxes, there's a number of features that are standard or should be standard in their design. And this one shares most of those features, also has some of its own characteristics, I guess. Anyhow, first of all, I'll just say a bit about the box itself. It's made out of white pine planking that you can get at any lumber store. It, there's two widths of board here, one by six or one by six inches. So this is six inches wide, roughly. It's actually five and a half from the store. And then one by eight, which is actually about seven and a quarter or seven and a half inches wide. So this box uses one by six on the front, the bottom, and the backboard that you see here. And the backboard goes right up the back of the box to just under the roof board. The sides and the roof board are made out of one by seven or one by eight pine which as I said earlier actually measures about one by seven and a half or one by seven and a quarter depending where you get it. A standard dimension on, for all tree swallow bluebird boxes is the size of the entrance hole. This should be an inch and a half in diameter. Anything less and it'll be too small and anything bigger will probably allow things like starlings or other birds that you may or may not want into the box. So a few words about dimensions of the box generally. The front board here, as I mentioned, it's one by six pine and it's usually about nine inches long, this front piece. The distance from the bottom of the hole to the top of the inside floor, which you can see here, here's the floor and here's the top of the floor. I've got it showing here on the uh, board. You, can bear, you might be able to see it written there. Anyhow that dimension should be about five and a half inches. That gives the birds inside enough depth to keep out of the way of certain birds that might be looking in there like starlings or um, other predators that might just get part way in. Gives them some depth to keep hidden at the back of the box in safety. So nine inch front by, a, by the standard one by six board size. The side board or the side dimensions would be again roughly nine inches at the front here, slanted upwards to a 11 inch back. So nine high in the front, 11 high in the back. And this would equal about a 15 degree if you were to cut it on a, a cutoff saw where you can adjust the degrees of the board. So you can cut one board at, in the in the middle, and then uh, you can do you can have both sides tops angled from that one cut. So again, nine in the front, eleven in the back. This backboard, I mean, it can vary in length, but I usually leave enough hanging down, just so I can put a few screws through it to mount it onto posts or to wooden buildings, things like that. Now some people just cut it off here and then they may attach a separate um, little uh, piece of wood to attach it to something or they may simply screw in metal attachments to attach it to metal posts to hang on out in fields. The roof is made out of one by eight as I said and this one's about I think nine or so inches long, nine and a half inches long. I have just enough overhang to provide some shading for the entrance hole. I usually, if it's just going to be on a post, I'll often extend the roof over the back for an added bit of protection and I cut this groove in it to enable rain to fall off um, as it's raining. It'll come down, hit this drip edge and then fall as opposed to dripping down inside the box. This one also has a nice feature of a front that's hinged and it's hinged basically on these two screws one in each side 
about three quarters of the way up. You can mark it off. That's what this horizontal line here is showing just the location where these screws should be. So the screws go in the side and act as a hinge and then the screw down here holds this shut when it's uh, when the birds are nesting in it and then when you want to come and clean the nest out in the fall or check the nests to see how they're progressing you can simply flip this up and look in. This one's a little stiff right now I need to get it a little looser. Also inside this front board I saw some uh, shallow cuts across the board just below the hole so there might be eight or ten cuts here close to the hole halfway down the board this just gives the young something to grab onto as they get older and they start moving up towards the hole to look out their little toenails can grab onto these grooves which otherwise this board would be quite smooth and shiny not like a natural tree cavity at all so this enables them to hang on and grip with their uh, toenails as they flutter with their short wings uh, up towards the nest hole. This particular box, because it does have the wider sides, the one by eight sides, it has a big floor in it. It has five and a half by five and a half inch floor, which is about 30 square inches, um, which is a lot of people, especially for tree swallows, argue that they need a bigger floor like this or it's better for them because they sometimes have five to seven nestlings which can grow and take up quite a bit of area. I've used a lot of the other nest box sizes um, or another common nest box size I use here is one that has a somewhat smaller floor like a four by five and a half which is about 22 square inches and that they seem to do fine in that too for the most part. There is the odd time when they get a bit crowded. The main thing to avoid are really small um, nest box floors that might be like three by four which would give you 12 square inches or four by four is a bit small too it's only 16 square inches so you'd want to stay above you know, uh, 22 square inches or 20 square inches and up some people even have them bigger but when you think about it a tree swallow nesting in a natural cavity you would rarely have a cavity that's this big on the floor they'd probably have something much smaller in most cases. But since we can make them better, we probably should make them a little more roomy like that. This one is natural still, I haven't painted it, but quite often I will paint them or stain them. Both applications do increase the durability of the wood and the, la the long lastingness of the wood. Um, I found painting to be the best. Uh, so you would typically put a an exterior acrylic paint on here. First you would put an exterior acrylic um, primer on here which is a white looks like a white paint or a flat white paint. You'd let that dry overnight and then then you put one or two coats of an exterior latex acrylic paint on here and I would suggest a light color to reflect the sun's heat as much as possible. Um, because the birds are landing on this too and standing on the front here quite often feeding the young and if you painted it dark brown or dark black or something it's going to be really hot in the sun plus some of that heat may transfer to the inside of the box. I also put a few, they, they're not in here yet, I did cut the corners of the floor off a little bit but I might, I'll drill a couple holes, two or three holes in the bottom here too just to aid in any water drainage if needed. If you had a driving rain that happened to go in the nest hole, then it might be beneficial to have a few little holes in the bottom to enable drainage. Anyhow, that's the main features of that box. And this one's screwed together. You can also use nails. I recommend Ardox nails, uh, preferably galvanized, but normally normal steel ones work well too. For a half inch or three quarter inch wood like this, you'd probably want to have one and a half inch or uh, one and three quarter inch nails at least um, just to ensure good anchorage and certainly once you paint them if you paint the box that'll help protect the nails as well. Anyhow I hope that overview was helpful and uh, have fun building your boxes. <laughs>